Emotional development refers to the ability to recognize, express, and manage feelings at different stages of life to have empathy for the feelings of others. Why it is important for us to learn about emotional development? So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you all fine and healthy. Welcome back to Child Development Subject with me, Ms. Dia. So, today we are going to learn about our new materials and it is called as Emotional Development. There are several points to learn in this meeting. The first is the definition of emotion and emotional development. And then, the second is characteristic of emotion and then the third is kinds of emotion. The last is the stages of emotional development. So before that, each of us uh, is born into society with rules, expectations, attitudes and values. Our task throughout development is to come to understand ourselves how we feel and functions, and what our society deems desirable and appropriate. This process of socialization, learning, socially acceptable behavior, attitude, and values is greatly influenced by parents and other care providers, as well as more peripheral people in children's life. The emotional development of children and adolescents represent a huge variation according to age, maturity, intellectual development, temperament, experience, family background, cultural background, etc. Well, before we go any further to emotional development, it's better for us to know first about the term of emotion. So, what is actually emotion? Let's take a look. So here is the definition of emotion. According to Darwin's Medical Dictionary for Health Consumers, emotion is actually an effective state of consciousness in which joy, sorrow, fear, hatred, or the likes are expressed. Emotion is actually also a strong feeling state arising subjectively and directed toward a specific object with psychological, somatic, and behavior components. Well, according to Morgan, King, and Robinson in 1979, there is no concise definition of emotions because an emotion is many things at once. The way we feel when we are emotional, the behavioral arousal, the physiological or bodily basis, the emotions are expressed by language, facial expression, and gestures are very much like motive states in the day drive behavior. So we can say that emotions is actually really complex because only people who gain emotions know how they feel and perhaps they may not be able to express it properly. So the next is about the characteristics of emotions. So there are several characteristics of emotions like the core of an emotion is actually feeling and then emotional experiences are associated with some instincts or biological drives Emotions are the products of perceptions, and then every emotional experience involves several physical and physiological changes in organism. The next is the basic ways of expressing emotions are inborn and it develops through maturations. The next characteristic is emotions rise abruptly and die slowly. Same emotions can be aroused by a number of different stimuli, and emotions have the quality of displacement. So that's all about the emotions. Now, what about emotional development? 
Emotional development in brief involves the recognitions and expressions of feelings and emotions. Emotional development is actually a process that a child develops from dependence to a fully functioning adult and applies to most life forms. Emotional development refers to the ability to recognize, express, and manage feelings at different stages of life to have empathy for the feelings of others. Why it is important for us to learn about emotional development? So, here are some importances of emotional development learning. The first, to have better understandings of the child. And then the second, to understand the problem of psychological origins. And then to deliver dental treatment service in a meaningful manner. The next is to establish effective communications and then to have a better understanding and also better teaching of primary and preventive care and then to have a better effective treatment planning and execution and the last is to provide a comfortable environment. The next we are going to talk about the kinds of emotions. So generally, there are two kinds of emotions. The first is positive emotions, and then the second is negative emotions. Positive emotions are pleasant emotions which are helpful and essential to the normal development of an individual. For example, love, amusement, curiosity, joy, etc while negative emotions are unpleasant emotions which are harmful to the individual's development. For example, fear, anger, jealousy, guilt, etc. So how the emotions develop? As Spitz in 1949 has observed, emotions are not present already made from birth. Like any other sector of the human personality, they or emotions have to develop. So emotional development is due to two things. The first is maturation, and then the second is learning. Not to either one alone. Now let's move on to the stages of emotional development. So here there are four stages of emotional development. The first is during infancy, and then the second is during childhood. The third is during adolescence and during adulthood. The first point is during infancy. So right from the time of birth, the infant cries and his bodily movements seem to give evidence of the presence of emotional element in him. What are the specific emotions, if any, he experiences at this stage is difficult to be answered. There are no indication of clear cut definite emotional part pattern that can be recognized and identified as specific emotional state. This stage or infancy is over in a very short time when the general excitement becomes differentiated into simple response that suggests pleasure and also displeasure. The next stage is called uh, during childhood. So during childhood, peer group relationship and school atmosphere and other environmental factors influencing the emotional behavior. The emotion which gets linked with the new experiences and interests and emotional behavior get linked with new stimuli. In later childhood, the child tries to express his behaviors through reasonable means and result of many factors. In this stage, in childhood, the children, the children are in the position to express their feeling through language. Less from during adolescence and also adulthood. So in this stage, emotions during this stage uh, change very frequently and very quickly. It makes them moody. Their mood easily changes. And in short time, they could switch between being happy or extremely 
said. So have you ever heard about a mature person? Yeah, a person can be called emotionally mature if he is able to display his emotion and control properly. The last part of this meeting, we are going to talk about the factors affecting emotional development. So there are many factors that affect emotional development of an individual. The first is hereditary factors. So it has been seen that some similarities are found between the emotional development of parents as well as children. The second is maturation. As the child develops mentally, he also gets emotionally matured. It has been proved through experiments by psychologists that the development of emotions of the child depends upon the level of maturation of the child. The third factor is training. So children learn through conditioning. An expert named Watson did an experiment on a nine-month-old baby. So the baby was shown a rat and in the background a loud sound was made. After some time, it has seen that the baby started crying at the sight of the rat. The next factor is health. So children with sound health are able to control their emotions in a better way. And children who are weak remain irritable easily excitable and emotionally unstable. The next factor, number five, is intelligence. So children who are intelligent are emotionally stable. Children with low intelligence questions are emotionally unstable. The next factor is family relations. So the relations of family members with each other and how they express their emotions affects the emotional behavior of the child. If the, the behavior of uh, the parents is stable and they express their emotions in subject and also balanced manner, the child will also learn to express his emotion in a balanced manner. Number seven is social environment. Just like family, neighborhood, school, society members exert influence on the development, uh, emotional development of the child. If the environment of the society is tense and emotionally charged, the child will also become emotionally unstable. If people around uh, are emotionally stable, they express their emotion in a social approved way. If people have control over their emotions, the child also imitates and follows the same patterns regarding his emotions. He will learn better control over his emotion and will always try to confirm the societally approved way of expressing his emotions. And then for the last factors is control over emotion. At the time of emotional state, body undergoes many changes. When these emotional states are created in the body frequently and intensely, it will affect the body badly. Well, so that's all of our material today about emotional development starting from the definitions of emotion and also emotional development, the characteristics, the kinds and also the stages of emotional development and all the factors affecting emotional development. I hope you have a good understanding about it. See you again in the next meeting. Goodbye and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih sudah menyaksikan video pembelajaran ini. Jangan lupa like, comment dan subscribe serta nyalakan tanda loncengnya agar kalian tidak ketinggalan informasi update lainnya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Pertumbuhan penderita COVID-19 di 2021 ini semakin meningkat 
Tentunya ini tidak hanya berdampak terhadap kesehatan kita, tapi juga berdampak terhadap perekonomian Indonesia. Oleh karena itu, marilah bersama-sama kita memperjuangkan melawan COVID-19 ini. Protokol kesehatan tetap wajib kita laksanakan, walaupun telah divaksinasi. Mari kita melaksanakan 5M. Memakai masker, mencuci tangan, menjaga jarak, mengurangi mobilitas, dan menjauhi kerumunan. Marilah kita kembalikan kejayaan Indonesia ini dengan kesehatan dan pertumbuhan ekonomi yang semakin baik dengan bersama-sama kita melawan virus COVID-19 ini. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.